Welcome back, spooky cuties, or welcome to my hilariously low-budget channel. Tis I, your ghost host with the most Patricia Absinthe, bringing you yet another DIY video. And I'm sure that explains why I'm wearing such a fabulous lit, surprisingly boring blazer today. And also, it's almost Christmas, so uh, don't mind the uh, Christmas peeking out of there. <laughs> that is just a cute outfit I'm wearing. I'm also pretty sick, so I wanted to film the intro, talk you through it, and then I can finish it looking like a goblin, and you'll never know. Ha! Ah! <laughs> Movie magic of just not being on camera. So this blazer that I bought is not the greatest, but I'm going to talk to you about it. So the first step in wanting to do a DIY project, especially a vest, whether you want a metal vest, a goth vest, you just want it inspired by movies, whatever you choose, and you want to kind of have a theme. I think the best way to pick what you're doing is by the article itself. Find one that inspires you. It can be anything. You can go to the thrift store, you can see some shitty fast fashion blazer, you have to figure out if you want to do a vest, so if you want sleeves, if you want lots of sleeves, if you want lapels, pockets, or if you just happen to be at a thrift store and you see something that makes you go, ho ho ho. Or likewise, when I saw this one, I was like, ho ho ho, I have ideas. So I'm going to take it off and show you. It is not of good quality. I thought it was a lot better, and I have DIY'd many many jackets and vests. In fact, one reason I had to hurry up was because I promised my friend I would do a jacket for her for Christmas. So I have to hurry up. And sadly, again, because I end up being fast fashion, it's just not great quality. I was ordering some stuff off of Timu for the other video, and I've been wanting to do one of these blazers, but uh, it's not the best. But I have put band patches on lace and it worked. So I'm not too worried. I'm just. <sighs> My cats have to play right now. I'm not too worried. I'm just disappointed, you know? I want at least some substance to it, but no. Helsing. Hi. So the vest, the fabric, it's only single layered. So for my eyes, you can definitely see through it. But yeah, it's a, it's only single layer. It's very thin. So it's not very substantial. It's like, you know, you've ordered online and got something like this before. It's, it's not the worst. It's not the windbreaker material, but it's also not great. So, it's very thin, single lining, it has the black lapel, gorgeous, and obviously all over, black and white stripe, the pockets are indeed a deception. They make you think there are pockets, and there are no pockets. So, the whole point of the DIY is to show you how to go from this and to be fair it's cool on its own but I need more it needs to be like me she, oh I'm gonna show you my favorite DIY jacket stay where you are obviously so before I put this one on this is another example I got this secondhand forever 21 final jacket and just oh I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with the sleeves, so I didn't do anything with them yet. So yeah, I painted spider webs. Show you the pins. Cocktail twins. Specimen. Christian Death. Groovy. And, oh, so cute. So hard to see backwards in the reflection. Go. Oh yeah, virgin prunes. <laughs> I 
so goth I crap bats. Oh, 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 there we go. I'll take it. I've met one. Let's check him. Lords of the New Church. I have absolutely no desire to fit in. Skeletor. Looks in the pins. Where else do I have pins hiding on this thing? Oh, oh, oh. Creepy girls do it better. So then the patches on the front here. <laughs> Your ignorance is their power. Sisters of Mercy. Great big Robert Smith boys don't cry. Goths against fascism. And then this one. Sometimes antisocial, always anti fascist. So the back. It's my great big the cramps. Sex work is real work. Horror business. Um, obviously, unknown pleasures. Yeah. Killing joke down there. <laughs> the damned. Alien sex fiend. I think I covered everything on this. Oh, yeah. Forgot the other patches on this side. Only God can kink shame me. Peter Murphy looking gorgeous. <laughs> Please, Jesus, protect me from your followers. Obviously, hand on a random cross. Yeah. I love this jacket. So I quickly pop it on. So that's the whole point of, oh yeah, and obviously the bones and the chains. So that's the whole point of why I wanted to show you guys how I come up with the process, the inspiration. Uh, fuck, but this wig, you can't even see it. Here, I'm just gonna. <laughs> Defeats the purpose, but love it. Obviously added the spikes the bones. So while I show you this jacket then, one of the biggest questions you have to ask yourself first when you find this article that's inspiring you, do you want to wear it to shows? Do you want to wear it to concerts? Do you want to wear it out? Do you want to just wear it to like the bar and the grocery store? Or do you want to get in places with security with it? If you want to go to big venue shows, no spikes, no chains, none of these. I have a couple of concert safe vests and they're less fun. They really are. But that's what I have to do with my friends. If you want to be able to wear it to the things that you want to go to wearing it, you can't. Otherwise, they will rip it off and you'll be sad. Yeah. Happened to a few of my friends at a skinny puppy show actually. They couldn't get in unless they either removed it or put it in their car. But if they didn't go by vehicle, they couldn't really do that. So, yeah. So that is the number one question. Do you want to wear it into places where they might go like, haha, can't come in with it. But otherwise, I mean, of course, you have to think if it has great big swear words or inappropriate things, you have to think of whether you'll get kicked out of places, but there's stuff to keep in mind, but spikes, chains, dangly things you have to think of, number one, do you want to wear it places? Like bigger concerts, whatnot. If it's a small bar show, generally you're fine. I wear, here's a picture, I almost fucking stabbed goth dad with my gigantic spiky collar. So, but that's at a smaller bar show. Meanwhile, if I wanted to wear this when I saw Rob Zombie, oh boy, they would not let me. Metal detector run off for my boots. Yeah, they don't even like jewelry. This would be a no-go. But that said, that's the number one thing to keep in mind. You don't want to put all your beautiful spiky things on something that would be thrown out if that's where you're going. So that's the number one concern. But number two... How much do you want this to be one that you can keep working on? Or do you want to go all out in one go? So for example, you can focus more on paint. You can paint your entire jacket, especially depending on the fabric, something like this. I could have painted the whole thing. Do you want to go with patches? Do you want to sew them on or use the special weapon I'm going to show you that I wish I'd found in my other years of doing jackets? 
So it's what I used on this one actually. Where do you want to get the patches? Do you want real ones? Do you want bootleg ones? So these are actually from Etsy. You can buy them directly from them so that will have a quality difference. Love. I don't recommend any more the Amazon band patch packs. They tend to be crap. Yeah. Even though some of them will have bands that I love, you'll get so many bands that you don't, and that everyone else has the same patches, and the quality is shit. General don't. But I do say, I do recommend Etsy. Same with pins. Everything's so expensive. So if you can't get it directly from a show or the band or you're just trying to get this done within a time limit, you don't just have things saved up, Etsy. Etsy all the way. Or if you're able to use like Rockabilia or something, but I'm going to get into that. So I have a bunch of pins and stuff already ready. So now that we've talked about that, we're going to pick. You have to think about your theme. For the black and white, I was planning on doing a horror goth theme. So we're going to pick out some more stuff. I'm going to show you the options that I got for it. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to turn you around and give you a tour of also how I store my jacket DIY stuff. So first of all, um, sorry about my hairy ripped up couch. I have three cats and a dog. If you want to meet them and you haven't already, you can watch my video talking about them. Otherwise, I'm just going to show you this and you're going to ignore all the cat hair. Yes? Yeah. So first, the pins that I specifically got. So I know Shein is crap, but at the same time they did a friends collab. And for the vest that I'm making my friend, I got us matching friends pins. Oh, oops. That's not for that, but I got a bisexual card. Hee <laughs> hee. Funny. Okay. So these are little bat lapel pins. The cutest. And we've got some pins to go through. So the friends ones. Not today, Satan. Oh, sorry. Not today, Jesus. The grape soda one from Up. System of a Down. The Cure Boys Don't Cry. Ambiguously Gay Vampire. Bauhaus. Hose before hose. Spooky for life. Not just Halloween. Type of negative. Reptar. Cute little bat. Second Paul one. Show you what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> Who you whore. Random Jack one. Sounds gay I'm in. Misfits. She has but a scratch Monty Python. Speak fluently in movie quotes. <laughs> Nine Inch Nails. So, oh. <laughs> Little thing of... <laughs> ah, horror movies. So we have to remember the theme is goth slash horror. So with that in mind, you have to pick out what goes with the sort of theme, the vibe. You have to remember it is black and white, but... I'm definitely going to put the sound scam in. So I can put that over in that pile. This will go with the sort of Beetlejuice vibe. And even though he's a monster, it counts. Reptar can go. Horror movie pen. Nine Inch Nails. These two pins really balance each other out. Obviously, I need one of those. Do I want to put Bianca on there? Kinda. <laughs> I love this pin. Hell yeah. I don't want to go for too many pins. I definitely want to buy a house. <laughs> and obviously I need pose before hose. And misfits. <laughs> and just put a scratch. Yeah. Do I want my not today Jesus? I don't know if I'm going to put that one on this one, only because it is so flimsy. Definitely going to go with these bats. <laughs> Not so unhappy. So, alright, I got these for the purpose of matching with my friend. Do 
but I want the friend's turkey. I want Central Park. Central Park will go with this sort of theme. So from the ones that I... Oh, right. And that'll balance out the random gold. It can't rain all the time. The crow. Okay. I'm really close. Okay, this is already going to be so heavy for how flimsy that material is. Another thing to keep in mind. So, before I get into the next one... Oops. Alright, so my number one tip, before I get into the next part, also because I dropped everything, I switched it, so this is my bucket of what's going on. And then I'm going to show you how to do those. My number one tip, my saver, my fucking Jesus, when it comes to DIYing. This is my god. Gorilla Fabric Glue. I love it so much. It is the best thing ever. If you DIY, use this. I'm not kidding. This is the best thing ever. The fact that it actually stays on and it has saved my fingers with sewing, trying to iron on shit that doesn't want iron on. This is amazing. I have glued t-shirts that I wanted to use as patches to lace with this. So if you plan on DIY, you want to do a jacket, I cannot physically recommend this more aggressively. Not sponsored, <laughs> but very happy. Let me see, that goes in the bucket. I'm going to show you the patches that I have. I found this Tenacious D one on Etsy. Oh my god, it is amazing. Uh, this one has boobies, but okay, hold like this. <laughs> So it is a coffin shaped topless lady. <laughs> it is phenomenal. Whoop. There. <laughs> Did I get in trouble for that? I hope not. I love this patch. It is gorgeous. That brings you to the point that I made earlier about patches that won't get you in trouble. Trying to match with my fr friend. I got a bunch of patches. Once again, Etsy. <laughs> Salad fingers patch. Oh, Bella. <laughs> so ones like this, I'm going to cut the edges. Propane. Beetlejuice, no feet. Let's start this pile. I thought I bought patches, but I bought bookmarks, so watch out for that on Etsy, I guess. Bury me with books. <laughs> Three raccoons. They make wonderful patches. Here, if you would like, depending on where you're watching me, you can screenshot. I don't know. Can you scan a screen recording? You can't. Etsy. Three raccoons. That is the QR code. Okay? Not sponsored. <laughs> I'm just the hype person. So to match with my friend, and again the horror vibe, and this is actually perfect because it's very similar fabric to the jacket. We have Patron Saint Michael, and of course Sir Freddy Krueger. What about Jason? Nosferatu? The cutest little death. <laughs> Fight orcs, not wars. Ash. Cannot. Oh, I love these. And on Etsy for the screen printing, I think each patch is around. We'll go with like four bucks. But that's why I said, like, it depends on whether you can and want to paint shit yourself. And of course, you can add things on. But obviously, Frankenstein's monster. Oh yeah, I got a second one for my fiance. If I want to match my friend, destroy the patriarchy, not the planet. Creature from the Black Lagoon. And I have even more, but that's just what I'm showing you right now. So I'm going to add those. 
So this is my pride and joy. This is one of the smartest ideas I did for my squirrel brain. It is dusty. But, so what I did is I bought this toolbox thing for my DIY stuff. So I have Iron Maiden patches that I bought at the tour. Thing of chains, I haven't gotten to it yet. Needle and thread. Again, this is like the shitty Amazon patches. And I mean, they do their job, but they're just, they don't look as good. Actually, I'm going to pull out Ghost from my friend's jacket. Wait. So, oh yeah, you can use old fishnets in your DIY. Those are pins that ended up being way too big. Obviously, there's a loot grade. These pins ended up being way too big. Nicholas Tesla. <laughs> so, I haven't done anything with them yet. I got, I got more patches. More options for further projects. Oh, Black Sabbath. But for now, I'll do that. We're going to go through. Oh, hell yeah. This damned patch. A Susie Sue eye. And I want to put Bauhaus on there. <laughs> Perfect. God's busy. Can I help you? Uh, tiny bit concerned about the thickness, but... <sighs> Worst case, I can cut off the beautifully sewn edges by one alien sex fiend on there. Ah, I just said I was going to do the eyes. Do I want the eye or do I want these? Or I could put the eye on one of the lapels. Maybe I'll do that. Bauhaus. I mean, I already have... Mm. Eee! <gasps> so cute. Love this one. No gods, no masters. I think it's too heavy. Well, this Misfits patch is light enough. So you know, definitely not one I've put on one yet, obviously, but read the cure one. So for now, because it's heavy, that's what I'm going to go with. So that's why I have loose patches that don't have a home yet up there. Next. Shit. <laughs> Maybe don't snap that off the thing. I'll fix that. I actually organized, and that's why I put all those pins there. It's down here. I have random pendants. <laughs> you can see a Futurama pin in there. And a pendants, googly eyes, stuff like that. So in here we have safety pins, random chains, D-rings and hardware. Up here we have a bunch of the spikes. I'm going to need more spikes again. I have my spikes organized by both size and type. And then I have all the backings down there. And the one I've been waiting for. My glorious pin drawer. So because I am like that, I need to organize things by how much I like them. <laughs> so some of these are a tiny bit alphabetized. But then also, like, ugh, these are my favorite ones, that the jacket has to be good enough to be worthy. Show you my good enough ones. You can take a look at the others. It's gorge. Can you can get these all on Etsy. The one was a whole seller who literally... Like, I bought whole sheets of beautiful pins. So that's going to show you my favorites that don't have a home yet. Specimen, Sisters of Mercy, Killing Joke, The Cult. Got more. You can get the cramps back there. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Peter Murphy. <gasps> Ian Curtis. Ministry, Misfits. Alien Sex Fiend. Look at the damned. Damn. More Peter Murphy. Look at that Susie pen. <laughs> 45 grave. So that's the thing. I like to have these organized like this because 
I mean, it's just so handy. So I'm going to, of course, look through some more things. But this is step one. You go through your shit. You figure out what you have or what you need. How much you want to spend. Obviously, I've invested, but that's because I like making coats. In fact, I'll give you a quick tour of a few of my coats. One sec. So I'm actually in the middle of a project that I was doing of putting all of my coats hung up on the side of this shelf thing that I bought at the bottom of my stairs. So I've got all my purses, well, a bunch of my purses, lip service hung up there. I see sunglasses. I haven't finished the shelf yet. Oh, look, it's a me. Some of my stickers and stuff. I was working on that, and I'm going to put, actually, there we go, towel bar on the side. So that's why I have these hanging up here. They're not even all of them. I have a bunch of them upstairs. Obviously, this is the one I just showed you. So my favorite, oh, my pride and joy. So this is one I actually did when I was 19. So it's not perfect. The way I laid these, and you can tell it's a thinner faux denim. It's so that they stick up when I wear it. I didn't completely do it. Uh, yeah. I actually had to sew the patches so they wouldn't stop coming off. See, so I've got Slayer, Sepultura. It actually came with these already. Rammstein, Deicide, Cannibal Corpse. ACDC, can you can tell the quality difference like of cheaper patches? The crew, Slipknot. Oh, yeah. So one of my favorite back patches. Beautiful random Slipknot down there, and Motorhead. Again, I just I didn't have the resources at the time. So someday I will <laughs> do more with it. It's just. The quality is meh. So I think I did this one when I was 22-ish. It was for my first, but I think I made it for my first goth picnic. And I actually wore this when I was hanging out with my baby bat and she bought me a pin, I'll show you. But, so I've got Ministry. It already came with these on it. See, I painted spider webs, my fucking makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Shitty typo negative paint job. Creepier than a cemetery at midnight. <laughs> the cure. The patch cross that I put on there, except I lost a screw. Wait, patch, spike. Oh my god, look at these screws. <laughs> oh, I have to fix this one. Sisters of Mercy. London after midnight. Boy Harsher. Specimen. Bauhaus. Alien Sex Fiend. Oh, that got rubbed off. She wants revenge. <gasps> My baby bat bought me a Q-pin. <laughs> this is actually from Spooky Box Club. This is one of the only iron-ons I've ever had. Iron-on, well. Susie and the Banshees. Christian Death. <laughs> Live Fast, Die Young. So they used to write on my stuff when I was younger. New Order. The Pesh Mode. The gorgeous, gigantic Bauhaus patch. Once upon a midnight dreary. Skeletal family. Yeah. So that's like the whole jacket. I mean, I don't hate it. And it definitely, oh yeah, obviously I spiked it. It's just not the best thing I've ever made. Before I get to the one that you're probably way more interested in, this is a concert-friendly cropped vest that I did. So, oh, the notable lack of spikes. I was hoping two pins would pass. So, a metalhead box one. Cool that. Rip feelings. Ghost. Death. Iron Maiden. Ah, uh, can you tell? It's another tour patch. In Sifrim, one of my top favorite bands. Not like everything. Anthrax. Venom. Rammstein. Back is a gigantic Slayer patch, and yeah, it's not super interesting, but it's a venue-friendly one. So, before I show you this one, obviously, 
Slayer has been getting some shit, mostly on TikTok recently. <sighs> Slayer, obviously, they did a lot for the purpose of shock value. Like, come on, Tom Araya is Catholic and he would scream, God hates us all. So, whatever your opinion on Slayer, you can let me know, but just don't be a bitch. <laughs> so, I got this one actually at the thrift store. Fuck. <laughs> it's appealing. The back is the best part, so I'm gonna burn through this. So, this was actually sent to me forever ago by Vampire Freaks, Bats Against Trump. Fuck you, Killstar uh, pins. Remember when I gave a fuck? Which actually, remember when I gave a fuck? It's the exact purse I have right here. Old Killstar, Let's Seek. Couple of spooky box club, ghost stories, little broom. See these spikes? You can see the spikes coming through the other side. Because it's pleather, it's a lot heavier. Loner. It's not black, put it back. Cute little one. Hmm. Maybe I'll add to this again. But the best part. So at number one, I took the time to spike the entire hood. <laughs> my favorite. It's one of my, of my other Monty Python vest. <laughs> He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. So the only, I, I found that shirt at a thrift store. And obviously I was very excited for it, but it was huge. And I wanted to wear it. And I was, this is another example of finding potential anywhere. This was a t-shirt. I cut it off, sewed it on because I didn't know about my glue yet. Remember, use the glue. Sewed it on and then put little spikies. Spikies. Oh, beautiful. Uh-oh. I lost one. And they've stabbed other places. But yes, I love it. It's a heavy pleather. It's one of my warmer ones. Again, it looks deceptively simple. And again, maybe I'll add to it again. Love it. But yeah, so now I'm going to shut the fuck up and actually show you the process of DIYing the one that I was, you know, showing you. <laughs> the whole point of this. Yeah. Alright, so one of the hardest parts, depending on the type of jacket you're making, can be the type of back patch that you want to put with it. So in this case, Rob Zombie back patches aren't as hard as some other ones to find, but I ended up liking this one. This is for my friends. So I'm going to take this. It is actually a t-shirt, and what you do is you cut it out in a squarish shape, or depending on what kind you want to go with. Give yourself a bit of room. T-shirt material in general won't pill, and also it won't really matter for what we'll be doing with it. <laughs> I couldn't find my big scissors, so it was my tiny little baby scissors. And worst case, if you get a cheaper print, it feels kind of cheap, we can actually make it better with paint in a little bit. Alright, so once you've cut out your back patch, sometimes you'll realize there are band logos that you just cannot find anywhere and even finding their t-shirts are hard. My friend who I'm making that jacket for, she loves a band called Big Wreck, of which um, even finding the shirts was too difficult. So instead, you can Google the band logo, cut out a couple of extra patches, and then you just quickly paint them on. So it's not perfect, but, so for example, just kind of taking the logo shape, Transferring it to there, making a couple more, of course, waiting for the, uh, the paint to dry before you flip it over to glue it, but that is step one for just making a quick patch that you can't get otherwise. So all I did was add some basic white paint highlights to it, and already that looks so much better. Like, I mean, of course, it's not perfect, I didn't do a perfect job, but... Like, just, it upgraded that just kind of crappy, cheap print into something that looked so much cooler. Then I fixed that patch a little bit, and I made her Nickelback one, because she <laughs> loves Nickelback. So, while these dry, I'm going to head back to my own coat. So, one of the first things, I rebuttoned it, so then it's easier to see, one, where the jacket will lay closed, and two, minus the cat paw. You're not helping, Poe. Look at that face. 
It helps a lot for placing them and figuring out. So the first thing you want to do is flip it over. So then you want to flip it over, get the back part as flat as possible to visualize. So depending on what you're going to do as a back patch, normally I do something quite big and eye-catching, but I think for this one, I want to do my <laughs> naked lady with a skull coffin shape patch. So you'll want to figure out pretty much where even is. And so if you think that's about the waist level, kind of want that around the waist and how it'll flow with the back. Then you pick the rest of your patches, you trim them down. So after cutting out all the patches, this is kind of what I'm going for for the back side. So now what you're going to want to do is first take kind of the top patch and work down. And of course, keeping in mind where you want to lay it out. So the hardest part when you first open this glue is it will try to attack you. So you only kind of want to open it on top of the patch that you're starting with. There it comes. So you want to do a kind of thin grid-like pattern. Because it is very thick. My beard. Now, it's very difficult to do one handed, I must say. Also, you will probably want to have some sort of ventilation because, I mean, it's kind of like nail polish. It's, it has quite a strong smell. Okay, so I'm going to pause, do this two handed, and then show you once it's placed. So, because it's literally glue, you just want to do a layer. This one, so what I do between patches, so I literally just set it down on the next one, so then as the pressure globs out the glue onto the next one, I just let it keep going, and then I just use that on the next patch. Also helps save a mess, so then once you get that one, you flip the next one over. You try to remember where you had that one placed. Just kind of plop. And again, because it's glue and it bonds really well, so long as you plop it where you want it to stay, it'll stay there. So that's why we pre-plan it, and see? It is already leaking, so then you want to quickly get that border, especially on the thicker ones. So because of how the glue is, it's kind of easier to hold it very aggressively to squeeze it. But obviously it's a lot easier to not film it while you're gluing. But I usually find one tube will last me about two jackets, which is why I got a brand new one to make mine and my friends at the same time. Okay. Then, I'm gonna flip that guy. Ah! Keep my propane out of there. Okay, one sec. Alright, and if you're using this glue and you're using a softer fabric, you don't have to worry if it looks like it's kind of bouncing up. It's just because the fabric is lighter. So, like, these three are already on there. And, I mean, usually within the hour, but possibly even within the next, like, I'll say within the hour, it's pretty stuck on there, and then by tomorrow morning, it'll be good. You can wear it anywhere. So, for comparison, this is how much easier it is with two hands. That is just taking the glue and holding the middle and leaking over there. Holding the middle, middle, middle and the top, and actually evenly distributing it. It is so much easier. Make sure you have it the right way, as I almost did that. Up. And again, this bonds so fucking fast, so nicely. Take this one, so that you can kind of compare it. So then you know where you're aiming. Oh no! There. 
So because it bonds pretty fast, I don't like to leave it that long. I just wanted to show you a better example. And this one, I'll smooth out that fabric first, because otherwise those pleats will be there forever. That one even. Pop. All right, I'm gonna do the entire back side and then check in to show you what it looks like and then work on the front. Okay, so now everything is glued on, attached, and drying. It smells very aggressive in here, but looks pretty cool so far. So this is the back side and I'm gonna switch over to the front. All right, so I flipped it over. I have all the patches placed on the front where I want them to go. See, this is why it's so much easier when you have it folded. And I still have room if I wanna add a couple more later. But for now, we have this all done. So now I'm going to bippity boppity glue this bitch and be right back. All right, so now everybody is glued down and this is the best time to figure out if you want to paint things. Because while these are setting, if you want to fuck around with it, now is the best time. So if I want to, I don't know, I have these little bat buttons I think I'm going to put in those corners. So I don't think I want to paint that spider web, but I think I will actually paint the little fake pockets. So I have a lovely thing of white acrylic paint. And I poured some just into the cap there. You don't need a lot. Bloop. Okay. So then you have to figure out what kind of spiderweb shape you want to do, if that is what you're doing. So, I think having it come from the middle. And of course, you don't have to be too perfect with spider webs because spider webs are, you know, not perfect. Then you can look and see. So that's about four spots. So you want to go over about four spots here. My dog is sulkily breathing in the background. <laughs> so then, same thing over here. Go about there. And then, this one's there. So then, about halfway up that one. Try to do the same thing as best you can on the other side. Right. So then I will just film this side before I just quickly finish that one. Yes, Bailey, I'm getting high on the fumes too. So that's why I say you should really do this uh, with a fan or something when possible, because I am definitely feeling it in my head and my nose. How about you, honey? Yeah.
So when I was little, I used to do them much more uniform until when I got older, I realized that they did it more sporadically. If you actually look at the spider web, so that's why these are not even and symmetrical. It's kind of a tiny bit more random and wonky. I'm going to repeat it on the other side and be right back. Alrighty, so now both sides remotely match. We're going to let this dry and then I'll come back and put some pins on it. So now that's why I like to do more than one at a time. Now I'm going to go glue my friend's jacket and then hopefully by that time that's done, I'll be able to just pop some pins on and then give you a final result. All right, so I glued her jacket and fun fact, uh, less than two jackets and um, <coughs> I went through the whole thing. So there you go. That uh, tells you about how much that lasts. So one of the last steps for just what I want to do with this one. And it's, I don't wouldn't mind wearing this one out, but my main concern is just that it's such a thin fabric. If I put spikes on it, they would just flop. So, all right, the individual wrapping on those bat pins was a lot more aggressive than I thought. So, I'm trying to figure out. So, I'm going to stretch out those lapels, get them nice and about where they're going to sit. There. So then using those, I'm going to take the bat pins first, place them, yeah, I think I want them on the top ones there. Bell house, maybe there, maybe instead I'll do the great big but light ones, ambiguously gay vampire, and maybe bell house there. So you kind of want to go with symmetry. Kind of want Reptar up <laughs> Sounds gay, I'm in. Oh, those ones might be too heavy. I do want my silly ghost one. And I'll probably trade. Silly ghost, put typo down. Movie quotes. Misfits coffin. Pose before hose. Nin. Movie quotes. I can stick the crow down there. And, oh, I did want to get my tis but a scratch in there, but I don't think it'll work. But I did want to get my friend's one to match my friend. So maybe I'll stick Central Perk up there. And, oh, the only issue is this will be heavy, but if I put those down. Maybe that plan will work. All right, I'll quickly poke them in and then report back. And there we have it. It's a tiny bit heavy and I switched around a few placements. I end up switching my misfits and my pose before hose. I thought it suited better. Twist. There. There. So then, of course, the... The hanger test will tell us how badly it's going to sag. Oh, it's taking the Gorilla Glue thing with it. Okay. Right. Not as bad as I thought. There we go. So then I will finish by showing it and any other tips I might have when it's on. So, two things before I stand up and show you the jacket on. First of all, I am coincidentally wearing the same wig days later, which uh, rarely happens. So, haha, I could have lied and said it was the same day. Who knows? <laughs> but then next, one of my favorite jackets I've made, or vests, was already upstairs. So I figured I'd give you a tour before I show you the newest one. So this here is one of my favorites. You've definitely seen me wear it online, so. <laughs> Spooky girl, the cure. Yeah, I got this one from Shein. Sisters in Mercy. <laughs> Future cadaver. <laughs> oh, come on. The damned. 
Sex Gang Children. Got Depeche Mode. <laughs> they don't care about saving lives. They care about controlling women. <laughs> Peter Murphy's eyes. Cute little bat thing. So yeah, this is one I painted on. So London After Midnight. The back, I painted on Gary Newman. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. I've got the Crook Shadows here. I've got Tears for Fears here. Then below, I have the Mission, Susie and the Banshees. So it's just a cute, simple, lightweight, very cute, and honestly, one of my coolest ones. So that's why I'm saying you don't have to spend a lot. I think I got that vest for like $10. And the patches were a bit more expensive, obviously the pins. And plus the irony of <laughs> using a Shein vest for a goth jacket is not lost on me. But anyway, so this is the finished result, and everything is always a work in progress. Uh, so, for example, because that's pleather, it was able to hold the spikes. This could not because it's too floppy. <laughs> so I left the uh, wig tucked in so you can see it better. So we have those pins I put on. Tenacious D. <laughs> the patches. All the way down. Wait. Ooh. 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 Oh no, I forgot to take my pajama pants off. I'm not supposed to see my secrets. They're supposed to be my secrets. <laughs> the fact that I'm used. <laughs> oh yeah. This is the uh, the product of all that labor and glue sniffing. And I already gave my friend her jacket. <laughs> she likes it. And yeah, that was just a simple, whew, despite all the fumes and how long it takes to, you know, come up with plans and accumulate. The extra assembling for just this one was two hours. Not bad. I mean, of course, if you're spiking it, it'll take longer. But hey, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's yours. It's personal. And it brings back like that that old goth desire to have something no one else has. Even if those bitches have the same patches, they're probably not in the same spot. Or if I had to paint London After Midnight on there because I couldn't get a patch, I didn't paint it on yours, so it's mine. Haha. <laughs> Praise lovelies, let me know if that inspires you to do your own vest or jacket, or if I gave you any ideas. It's so fun, you can do pants, shorts, skirts, corsets. You can make a battle corset if you want. Again, you can do goth, you obviously do metal. You can do whatever you want. Heck, if you're a huge Taylor Swift fan and you want to do a Taylor Swift battle jacket, I mean, you do you. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny, though. <laughs> Please, on that note, lovelies, I hope you have a wonderful day and stay warm. <laughs> Let me know which of these pins was your favorite. Mine will have to be, there's a lot, but definitely <laughs> pose before hose. <laughs> Mad note, happy says goodbye as well. And I'll hopefully be seeing you in the next video. <laughs>